super fun stuff. For this video, I'll show you how I integrate fiber optic lighting into my minis. This will be a two part series with the first part going over the integration of the lighting into the minis and the second part being the battery integration into the base. So let's get started. First, I'll be going over the tools that I use. There isn't anything too exotic or expensive, and most of these tools are just good to have for modeling in general. So at the top we have gray stuff. Some of you may use green stuff or whatever kind of epoxy putty, but whatever you do modeling, this is a must have. Um, especially for this light integration, you're going to mess up and it's going to happen. An epoxy putty is going to fix those mistakes. Next we have scissors, used to cut fiber strands. Then we have our fiber strands themselves. Uh, fiber optics can range from being very cheap to very expensive. The expensive stuff is usually reserved for projects that require perfect fibers, like when you want to pass through data to for computer connections. Uh, for our use though, we, we just need something cheap and something that lights up at the end. So th these are end-lit fiber optic strands. If you go online for a store or to a store like Five Below, you can usually find these little junky toys. That they're, they're fairly cheap and they have a whole bunch of fiber strands coming out, probably a couple hundred of them. Um, as you can see in these pictures, each strand is, is lit at the end by the bottom of the base of the toy. Light passes through the strand and we only see the light that was refracted off the end of the strand. Now I warn you off the bat, if you kink the strands, you will create a refraction point where light will emit from those areas and it will reduce the amount of light that travels to the end of the strand. Be careful not to bend or damage your strands. Next we have our LEDs. These are 0402 pre-wired LEDs. They run off 3 volts and they're tiny. When I first started experimenting with fiber optics in these minis, I used the non-pre-wired versions and that was a pretty big mistake. These things are a huge pain to handle with your hands and they're really not meant for your hands. So I recommend the pre-wired ones. The wires coming off the LEDs are about the same width as the fibers, which is around 0.2-0.3 millimeters. In my projects, I always find a use for toothpicks. I use these things for pinning my models and fine modeling work with the epoxy putty. Also, a sharp X-Acto knife is always necessary when modeling. Next, I have a hobby handy drill. Now, this thing is awesome. You have to buy one. It comes in the kit that you have to put together, but this thing is perfect for modeling. It has just the right amount of power, and it's very easy to use. This is definitely one of my favorite pieces of equipment that I have. Then we have glue, which is in every modeler's bag. I've been using the Scotch uh, gel glue that you can find at tar Target or Walmart. And I have to say I like it a lot. It's, it, for the price, it's super cheap and it works really well. Uh, lastly, we have the hand twist drill and the drill bits. This is where we're going to have to make our tiny holes. And this has been a real joy to use. Make sure that if you buy one to get drill bits that are at least 0.3 millimeters. These drill bits are very tiny and they can be easily broken. So make sure you get uh, multiple of them right away. And that's it for the equipment. So let's talk about the theory behind how this will work. Here we have our model. In my case, it's a Gene Stealer Cult Acolyte. When we do this work, I recommend that you do the work with the body parts separated. In this model's case, the head, torso, and legs are separate. Let's say I want to light up the mini's eyes. Well, an obvious first start would make holes for the eyes. I make the holes for the eyes that would go to the middle of the head. I could go out of the back of the head, but we want to hide the wires and all that kind of stuff. So instead, I drill a large hole from the bottom of the, the head, the neck area, and meet the holes that I created for the eyes. Now the head is basically done, and next I'll make a similar size hole, lining it up to the head that goes through the torso and then down the legs. So after you drill a hole through the torso, now comes the decision time. I want to hide a wire so I have to go down one of the legs. I have option 1 and option 2. Let's say I take option 1. If I take this option, I will go down, then make an S-shaped curve, and then into the base. His legs have that hunched animal foot thing going on, so that proposes a problem. If I had to drill those holes, I could do it from just the ends, but I would have to drill it through the mini itself, right at that joint that makes it S. Which is fine, but if I do that, I'm going to have to make repair work. You want to find the easiest route for the wires rather than waste your time repairing the model. Let's look at option two. 
Here we see that the leg is a little more straight and doesn't have the same S shape. To do this, I would drill a hole underneath the foot to the knee and another hole from the waist to the knee, both meeting at the knee, making this long tunnel from the waist to the bottom of the foot. So if I start from the eye hole, I go from very small holes to a larger hole in the head, down the body and down the leg. Every model is a little different when it comes to routing. If your model has a skirt, that's great. It makes it super easy. There's a lot more plastic and a lot more area to work with. If your model has thin chicken legs and it's in a weird pose, good luck as that's gonna take a lot more time. The first time I did this work, I decided to place the LED in the base and route the fibers through the entire body of the Mini. Now I've gotten it to work and it turned out great, but I had a lot of problems doing this. Remember I talked about kinking the fibers? Well, if you have a lot of turns in your tunnel or your route through the body, you're gonna kink strands and lose a lot of the light that gets passed through the strands. Also, routing fiber can be a real pain. They are rigid, they, they like to go straight, and then you have to worry about protecting the strands as you finish the model. Also, glue dries and ruins fiber strands too, so you have to be extra careful when you're putting your mini together. Overall, this isn't ideal, but going this route, I found a better one. Remember the pre-wired LEDs? Those things are a real lifesaver. Instead, we can house the LED in the head. The LED is small enough to fit in any of the heads, and the wires attached can be bent, glued, or anything you want. So instead of those long fiber strands that can be bent or ruined by glue, and you have to protect while you're finishing your model, you can place small little wires that you can do anything with. Also, we'll still use fiber optics, but we'll use a very small amount that just attaches from the outside of the eyes to the inside of the LED. This method lets you attach your positive and negative ends to the battery that will be housed in the base. I'll go over how I fit the battery in the base in part two. And that's it. After you get the wires routed, you put together your model and finish them up. Then it'll just come down to how good you are at painting and basing. Now let's walk through how I did my Gene Stealer Cult Acolytes. I bought these minis on eBay pre-put together. They also came with all the additional sprues and additional parts. The only issue with these is that they're already put together. Many models just like this also have separate body pieces. The head, the torso, and the legs are all separate. That's great when we wanted this type of work. However, mine are already glued together. Luckily, I got the heads off, but the body, not so much. Starting with the head, I decided to do the larger hole near the neck first. It's up to you which holes you want to do first. It really doesn't matter in the long run since you'll be going back and forth anyways. Using my handy drill, I use a 0.8 millimeter drill bit and very carefully drill a hole up the neck to the empty space in the top of the head. You're basically trying to make a void in the head. If you go too far with the drill, you can easily drill a hole right through the head. If you do that, then you basically ruin the head. These heads have very small details to fix. There are a few exceptions with heads, like the Gene Stealer head that's kind of round and smooth in the back. If you made a mistake there, you could probably fix that fairly easily. But most other heads are just have too much detail, and you're going to ruin them if you drill a hole through them. For the most part, we want to avoid any mistakes. After drilling the larger hole in the head, I start to drill out the eyes. I use a twist drill with a 0.3 millimeter drill bit. You want to be as precise as possible with this. The face needs to be intact. Start slowly and aim your bit into the head towards the void you made earlier. You'll probably have to go back and forth between the eye holes and the neck hole to get them just the right size. When you drill the eye holes, you'll feel a little pop. That means you got through the void and through the little plastic in between. That's what you want. When you drill the eye holes, excess plastic will go everywhere. And you'll create little burrs around the eye holes. So take your twist drill and just very carefully clean it up it should be pretty easy to do. If you have other sculpting tools, you can work with those too if you want. The key is to be careful with the face. If you mess this up, you mess it up. And it's very hard to fix the face, especially with those level of details. Once you've finished all the holes in your head, now it's time to test it. I made a little tester LED light using a battery holder, a battery, LED, and some heat shrink. Um, I cut some fiber strands off the cheap toy and started to run them through the eyes down the neck. If the holes are completely clear, the fiber should route easily. Sometimes where the eye holes meet the head void, it's a sharp angle. A quick tip is to bend the end of the fiber a little prior to running in the head, and this usually helps it move easier through those type of angles and holes. But get your fiber through each of the eye holes first. 
If one of the fibers doesn't go in, you need to go back and clean up the hole with your twist drill or, or your handy drill. Once all the fibers are through, you can take the tester light, put it at the end of the fibers, and you should see light coming out the other end. You could test the models by shining light in the neck hole too, but what I found is this light can still pass through thin plastic, and it can give you kind of a false positive that your holes are drilled all the way through. Make sure the head is right, because you don't want to go back and have to fix something later. After the head, we need to take a look at the body. Most 40K minis have separate torsos and legs. If you have that, it's easier to do them separate. Take your head and line up where the hole meets, and then take your handy drill with the same bit and grow through the torso. The legs are kind of a different story, however. They can be easy, or they can be really difficult. Like I said before, you want to pick the leg that is the easiest, meaning the straightest and thickest, and the least amount of bends. This is where you have to plan your attack a bit. For most models, you'll be drilling from the waist to one of the knees, and then another hole from the bottom of the foot to the knee. The idea is to connect the two holes and have one easy route down. If you have a foot with lots of bends, you probably have to do a few relief holes. You'll have to get the wire down somehow. But then you'll have to do some repair work with the epoxy putty and, and mold and sculpt and all that kind of stuff. If you, want, if you have to do that, pick areas that are flat and easy repairable. With the alkalite I have right here, I couldn't separate the torso from the legs. But we had a skirt that is large and goes all the way down. I easily could drill a hole through all the plastic because it's thick and it gives me a lot of room for error. Most importantly, you want all your holes to line up. You want a continuous route from the head all the way to the bottom of the feet. After I had my route, I took the fibers from the head and pushed them through the holes I just made, just to make sure that all my paths were clear. Running long fibers through the mini was the older way how I used to do it. Now we use the pre-wired LED. However, this method is still nice to see that all my routes are nice and clear. If you made it this far, you're doing great and you're on the right path. First, take the pre-wired LED and test it. Red is positive and black is negative. Sometimes you'll have a dud LED, so make sure it works before you put it in your mini. Now we take the wires and route it from the top of the torso all the way down through the legs out the bottom of the foot. If your route is well done, this should be fairly easy. The wires on the pre-wired LED sometimes are tiny though and they like to bend. So you might get a little frustrated once you start putting your wires in there. But just be patient and keep trying and you'll eventually get it. The LED should be above the torso, ready to be put in the head. Mix a small amount of epoxy putty ahead of time, then grab your head and the LED. Shove the LED all the way into the void of the head, through the neck hole. Once you have it in there, test the LED one more time with the battery to make sure the light is pointing in the right direction. You should see light shining through the eyes. Keeping the LED in place, take the epoxy putty and fill the end of the neck hole, around the wires. Don't push the epoxy putty too far into the head or you will block the light from the LED. Test the LED again once you have the epoxy putty in place and make sure everything's in the right place before the epoxy putty dries. Now we can take the head with the LED that's wired to the body and start gluing them together. You can start the head and glue that to the torso and then glue the torso to the legs. So if you wanted to, you could stop here for the face, but the empty eyes look a little weird and goofy to me. Taking a few fiber strands, we can fill the eyes, which not only alleviates the empty holes, it disperses the light better. So you can take your strands, shove them in the holes as far as they go, and it'll probably be around a fourth inch, depending on the head shape. Bend the fibers around the eyes, so you basically want to try to break the fibers at the specific spot. If the fibers don't break, you can mark it with the bend, and then take the fibers out, cut it, and then put the tiny strand back in the eye, any way you really want it. Just get the fibers in the eyes and make sure they're not poking out. I also like to take a toothpick and push the fiber strands into the head a little bit to make sure they're not sitting out and they're sitting correctly. If you drill your holes the right size and you didn't go all crazy wide drilling or something like that, you won't have to glue the fibers in. They should stay right in there. After the model is dry, it's a good idea to plan out the base and how he'll sit. I like to pin my models using toothpicks. One foot has the toothpick and the other one has the wires. Some people use little metal wires, it's kind of up to you, I won't judge. Plan around where you want him to stand, and plan where the toothpick and the wires would go in. Take the handy drill, drill out some of the holes where you think he should go, stick them onto the base and make sure he's standing in a good place, and if the wires are routed easily and accessible. You don't want to pull on the wire or have a difficult routing for the base. 
Before gluing the model to the base, it's ideal to finish the base first, then attach the model to the base afterwards. It will also be easier to do the battery work with the empty base. You can always test the mini using a small battery and hooking the ends of the LED. It's fun to see his eyes light up and stuff while doing this whole process. I like to paint the model after this, getting my primer, base colors, washes, and highlights all done. You could do this all before too, but you do run the risk of ruining your paintwork with some of the drilling and fine work. So I paint the mini after I do the LED work. It's pretty easy to avoid those areas if you aren't a complete slop when you paint. Even if you did get paint on the fibers, it's usually pretty easy to scratch off and, or you can just put new fiber in since it's such a short amount now. And that's it. You have a mini lit up and it's ready to go on the base. The entire process takes some time. It's not really that easy and you have to be very careful. It took me about a day on and off to wire five acolytes. You want to take your time and make sure you get them the way you want them to look. For the next video, we will label that part two of this process. I will show you how to create a custom battery hookup in the base that's completely hidden. You can then attach your mini to the base and then to the battery, and then you have easy on and off operations. Don't worry, it's pretty straightforward and you completed the hard stuff. I hope you liked this tutorial and I hope I went into enough details on how I do this kind of work. Again, if you take your time and be precise, this will work out for you. This work isn't really for everyone, but it's well worth the effort in the end. If you have any questions about the process, please feel free to message me or post in the comment section below.